What's up guys? And today I have a treat for y'all. I haven't seen many videos on one of these. I believe this is a 93 Maxima. And right there. 992. Yes. 93 Nissan Maxima. And we're going to be doing a... If I can find the keys... Going to be doing a transmission swap on this. It does have the three liter V6. This car is actually in really good shape. He got a used transmission. This is it right here. These tend to separate the torque converters on them. He did put rags and everything. He pulled it out of the junkyard himself, but he wanted me to put it in because he didn't want to mess up anything. Looks like we got rags and gloves around everything. Oil pan don't look too bad. We may try to clean it up some. I do already have the hood popped. You get this car for a steal too. I just look how clean this engine bay is. Such a huge engine too to be a three liter but it will move and pull and stuff sometimes i think they were saying that it slipped but whenever you're in reverse drive or whatever it starts making like a grinding noise i believe it's in the pump it's where it sounds like it's coming from so what we're going to do is actually pull this one out i may pull the starter and disconnect the torque converter and spin the torque converter just to see if it is the torque converter grabbing or what it could be see if there's any play in that but once you put it in gear it goes away but as soon as you give it throttle it starts coming back and it sounds just like it's in the pump but like i said we're going to go ahead and get started on this first thing i'm going to do is pretty much pull this air box off pull the battery out and get everything in here where we can see straight down onto the transmission and the way that you pull this air box off is connector right here and you will have looks like maybe an eight millimeter got one little connector right there which i hate these style connectors because they got the little snap ring in it that you got to pull out and then the box ow that pinched But, like I said, we got a few little connectors and stuff that we'll have to pull off. And then we can get this out of the way and get C on top of the transmission. But, let me grab a few tools and we'll be back. So, we got the air box out. Here is the bottom portion of it. It's going to have two tins on the bottom. One was twisting the brass insert in there so as long as you can get one out you can slide this one out as well but it's got two on the bottom and one on the top right here and there it is and then you will have two phillips head that goes through like the air duct tube and it goes into the inlet side of the air box on the bottom then you're going to have like i said one tube here one connector and then the little clips on the box and then you got that one connector right there and i'll show you how to get these connectors off here it is you have to pry back the sides of them just a little bit and then you can pull it straight back but they always clip them back in just so the clips don't come out and then i took the battery cables off i will have to take the battery out which that nut was actually loose. I hadn't even touched it yet. Of course, it's going to be tight on the top, but we should probably do that. Pull the battery out. There's a tray, and then we'll have some 10 millimeters, it looks like. Well, maybe a little bit bigger, maybe 12s right here on that. I believe they're 12 millimeters actually. You 
They are. They're twelves. So, yep, twelves right here. We'll take them out real quick. One handed. Looks like there's some kind of grease or coating on these. Keep it from corroding, probably. Which isn't a bad idea for a battery box. We got the battery tray out, and it is like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven bolts, but it was broke right here. So it just come out, and I think I know why, because the head of the bolt that holds this little piece in was rounded out. Should have been a 12, but it wouldn't even go on there. I mean, it's completely round, so I think somebody broke this at one point. But we did get get it out completely there is a hold down clip for the wiring on the front right here because it does go like that if i can get a little bit better shot like that and the wires are right there next step i'm going to do is go ahead and start taking some of these connectors off and we're going to have these two these two and back here in the back right beside the oil filter there's going to be some wires that run up right there and they come up on top right underneath the main wiring harness so you may have to disconnect it right there to get to them but they're on the back of some of the uh, like PCV lines and stuff and the heater hose so we're going to try to take all of those off and then we'll get the shifter cable out to get the shifter cable out you do have like this little pin right here or a little C clip type thing. You pull straight up on it and then it does have like this little like clip that holds it into the transmission shift bracket. But what I'm gonna do is go ahead and pull all this off and once I get the clips off of the shifter cable, I will show you what they look like because the one on it is one of those little weird like R type clips and they're they can be a little tricky to get off and once I get them get it off I'll show you how it functions so we got all the connectors disconnected now like I said there's gonna be four on the transmission on the top right here and two on your right and two on your left when you're looking at it from the transmission to the engine and then there's one more. You really don't have to take both of these up here off because one runs, I think, to the oil pressure sensor right below the oil filter. But um, there's one that you do have to. It's right here. And you can just pull it down. Now, I'm going to show you the clips. Here's that little C clip. Kind of like a um, brake line clip right there. You just pull straight up on it and then... Here is the actual clip that goes on to the shifter bracket. So the way you have to do this is that little like circular part. You pull out and straight up and it comes right out. But be careful because it will shoot off and it can be hard to find just because it is a little bit smaller. But we do have these off. My next step that I'm going to do is go ahead and remove the starter drain the transmission fluid because I haven't done that yet and then while I'm up here on top I'm actually going to go ahead and take some of these bell housing bolts off because if I'm already up here no need to go back and forth to top and bottom oh and I also disconnected some of these vacuum lines right here because they do go to this little canister right there I'm touching and it's just these two right there and they already had these zip tied up so we're good on that but as far as up here the bell housing bolts you can get to you should be able to get to like five of them i believe oh, let me just double check looks like one two three four five yep so should be able to get to this one right here right beside where the shifter cable is there's one right there underneath the looks like heater hose assembly then right underneath the lower radiator hose there's one then there's one right down in there and then one more down there on the bottom and they look like they're probably 14s let me double check that before I remove y'all from the video 
No, they're a little bit bigger than 14. They're probably 15 then. Either a 15 or a 14. I don't know if I'm just getting it on there. That's a 14. I got it on. So it is a 14 millimeter right here. So, like I said, I'm going to go ahead and pull some of these bell housing bolts up on the top. This top five. Take the starter off, and the starter is held on with the 14 as well. Yep. 14. And then I'm going to drain the fluid. Whenever I drain the fluid, I'll show you uh, how you drain it and where you drain it from. There's actually a big plug on it on the side of the case. But let me get some of this other stuff off real quick. And once I have all that off, I'll bring y'all back. Here's your starter right here. And you're going to have one connector on it right there. It's just a little push tab like any other connector. Then you're going to have, I think it is a 12 or 13, 13 nut on it or at least mine was, it was a 13, and then you will have two 14 millimeters to take it off. The top one will be a stud, the bottom one will be a bolt on there. So we have the starter off. This is a bolt that goes to the exhaust that bolts to a bracket that goes onto the transmission. If that wasn't a mouthful, I don't know what was. But I'm gonna show y'all where the drain plug is. So this is looking at it from the front of the car. There's a half inch drive, square drive uh, plug right there on the front. You can see it's been dripping a little bit, but haven't taken it off completely yet. But that's it right there. Just slid the pan underneath and I'm gonna go get an extension. So I did already loosen it up some. Let's see if I can get it to come out anymore. Let me scoot it to the side. So it still needs to come off a little bit more. Right, there we go. That's better. Oh, it is nice and clean, but there's your magnet. Don't know how good that is. No, it's gonna run down the side, of course. Haven't really inspected this yet. We just found a piece of a needle bearing inside of it. So that's not good. But yeah, this is going to have to be replaced. And as you can see, it's kind of dirty too on me. But while that is draining, I'll show you all a little bit of other stuff. So that right there is where your starter went. Right underneath there is a bracket that goes to the exhaust. Uh, that is where that other bolt I showed you <clears throat> showed you a minute ago goes. And then what we're going to do, we're going to pull the cover off, which is right here. I believe those are 10 millimeters. You can see the uh, torque converter right here. There's your flywheel. But we're going to take this cover off, take this bracket off. I think there may be one more bolt. Right, there's one here and there should be one on the other side of the front of the transmission. But we're going to pull that off and take the torque converter bolts out. And then after we do that, all we got left is to do is to pull the axles out and the rest of the bell housing bolts. Then we can support the engine up top if we can find a spot and take all the transmission mounts off. There should be two of them, I believe. And then you can tilt it down and drop it out. But I'm not going to get ahead of myself. We're going to, like I said, do this one step at a time. So next step I'm going to do is go ahead and get the cover off the bracket for the exhaust 
and take the torque converter bolts off. And once I do that, I will bring y'all back, let you know what size torque converter bolts are. And I probably will even take the um, transmission lines off as well. We're just going to undo the hose clamps and bring them out that way. Just to be a little bit easier for me. But we'll be back in just a few minutes.